Hello, and welcome to the Tavern Chat Podcast. I am your host, Eric Tenkar, your bartender in the OSR, your main proprietor at the Tenkar's Tavern blog. So yeah, things are still interesting here in the OSR. I had mentioned Targa, because if you don't know history, you're you're doomed to repeat it. And uh, of all people, Joe the Lawyer, he also remembers Targa. I'm going to go in a little bit into the history of, well, not even really the history of Targa, just some highlights on Targa, background on, on what its intentions were and why it didn't even last 18 months. Okay? And you'll see some similarities to what's going on now. Some of the same players, too. Go figure. But first, let's hear from Joe. Hey, Joe Delor. Targa. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Uh, I remember that. You know, it, it had decent intentions. It, in a way, it was trying to yeah, corral the old school and all that stuff on some level, maybe. But I think Chicago was, was deep into that stuff. And I, he, what he, his motto, I, I liked it. Put asses in seats. Enough of the bullshit. Just get people to play the damn game, which back then a lot of people weren't. I think this is, was it before Guy Gox died? Or, uh, I think, I mean... It didn't. We didn't have that resurgence, or we were just starting. It wasn't. It wasn't huge, though, you know. And the whole thing was let's get people to play the fucking games. And I remember bringing Targa shit to a convention and passing it out. It might have been an Anacon. I went to a hundred years ago over in uh, Stanford, Connecticut. Ah, Christ. Yeah. Ah, man, that was just. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, this is like hurting cats. This is the OSR has always been. There's no fucking definition. I mean, shit that people claim is OSR. I'm looking at it like, what the fuck is that? But hey, teach their own, man. Don't be a dick. Yeah, don't be a dick, man. That's always uh, a highlight for this shit, right? <laughs> uh, I wish I could say uh, it always applies, but it's always easier to be a dick than not be a dick. I don't know. This tar- Targa, for those of you who don't know the history of Targa. And you can go to the website. It is still up. Traditionalgaming.wordpress.com Its first post was January 3rd, 2009. And uh, we're going to go over what their the intentions of the Traditional Adventure Role-Playing Game Association or Targa was. <laughs> Danka, Danka, what what is, what is your issue? Dear friends and fellow game enthusiasts, consider for a moment the level of discourse. Sorry, oh, of discourse at discussion forums, like original D and D discussion, Knights and Knaves, Dragon's Foot. A lot of you can recognize these names; they're still around. The emergence of several blogs devoted to old school gaming, the rise of retro clones like Labyrinth Lord and Osric. And the success of new ventures like Fight On magazine. Some have suggested that change is in the air. That we are at the beginning of a renaissance and renewed interest in the kind of gaming that gave birth to the traditional hobby of the day. We are the Traditional Adventure Role-Playing Game Association, or Targa. We that this old school rebirth can only be sustained and grown if we all work on it together. Targa is a small band of gamers around the world organizing themselves as a not-for-profit corporation devoted to the simple idea that our our school of gaming still has merit today, should be preserved, promoted, and most importantly, played. Thus, Targa's primary objective is to do everything we can to assist in promoting traditional gaming, recruiting new players into the fold, and providing organizational support for judges. I'm going to time you out right here for a second. Um, a rule, because you can't grow a hobby, you can't sustain a hobby without growth. Um, I, I think today, in the last two years, for the most recent light, has been an awesome amount of bringing new people into the fold. As for providing organizational support for judges, uh, you know, I think I'd love to see that, but I, I don't know how that, that's kind of like find it for yourself on blogs and such. We want to help everyone find a game that needs one or help organize a new campaign if none can be found, a dungeon in every city. And two new players at every table, as it were. Now, let's see what, what it's not about. It's not splitting hairs, which games are or are not old school. 
We trust our fans to be able to figure that out for themselves right there and then. I'm going to skip ahead to today's con- controversy with the OSR logo from Stuart Robertson. Figure it out for your fucking selves, folks. You don't need an OSR logo on a product to know whether it is or it isn't. Honest to God, if you're in the OSR as a, a player, a consumer, a publisher, you're connected. You're looking at blogs. You're reading news sites. You're conversing on forums. You're listening to podcasts. You're discussing stuff on Discord. You're in Facebook communities. You don't need somebody's OSR sticker to tell you why something is old school. Additionally, using an old school sticker does not necessarily mean it's going to be old school in your eyes. Only you can judge that. So you don't need the sticker, folks. You want to uh, help everyone? Yeah, I already did that part. Okay. Some of us even like those newfangled games. We're not here to talk about trash, about other games or styles of play. And we are not reactionary neo luddites hell bent on snatching pre painted plastic miniatures out of children's hands and forcing the kids to get lead poisoning like we did in the old days. Target players to stay positive and stay focused on what we can get done. All right. Uh, a lot of people whose names you might recognize were involved in this from the start John Adams, Ray Taffling, Joe Block, Greyhawk Ragnard, uh, James Mal, Grognardia, Don Practic, Goblinoid Games, James Raggy. It was Legends of the Flame Princess back then. Ho, ho, ho. That's a little, uh, I didn't know. In any case, Victor Raymond, uh, Jeff Ryan, Matthew uh, Stanhan, and Ignatius Umla. Ignatius Umla was fight on magazine. So, that, that was the stated goal, all right? And then within, I don't know, March 21st of 2010, and this is January 3rd, 2009, so not even a year and a half. Uh, in 14, 15 months, here's a quote from somebody named James Bob, with two Bs. Seeing how Targa is only supposed to promote old school games and events and support them, it shouldn't attempt to put itself in any position of deciding who or what is featured. If it's old school or old school related, it is due. Give it its due and move on. Once you decide to try to become the single vision of what is old school and force others into lockstep by excluding what you deem as questionable, you've just outlived your usefulness to the OSR. This is in regards to Zach Smith's um, uh, D&D with Porn Stars videos that were up on The Escapist at the time on YouTube, and it didn't have any porn involved in it. It wasn't like that. Um, Now, it's interesting that we had this controversy back then. And I remember uh, controversy about Lamentations of the Flame Princess. I, I like the system. Uh, the art meant it was not going into the hands of anybody under the age of, I don't know, 16? When did they start showing penises and vaginas in art in uh, high school? So, this this discussion has been around forever, okay? And the idea that an organization or a person is going to be able to define what the OSR is, the OSR, the OSR is one of those, what I call it, Venn diagrams. There's lots of circles within, the, within this OSR thing, and some of them overlap, some of them don't, you know, and you're going to have different communities, and people are going to be in multiple communities. Some people only be in one community. And they're all OSR, but they may not intersect each other. Okay? This is not a homogenized community. Never has been. Again, we're going back to 2009, 2010. It was not a homogenized 
community. Now, sadly for Targa, the last update on this website is May 5th, 2010. Okay. This is when the Chicago Wiz, who was pretty much uh, behind the steering wheel at this point, decided to let it go. The drama was huge. I don't blame him at all. Hold on a second. I'm dying of... Sorry. I was dying of a phlegm bubble. I told you I got the fucking concrete back. But, uh... There's always been an underlying morality issue in the OSR. It gets in all gaming. And that morality issue or uh, tentpole constantly moves. What is the current issue? Now the current issue is somebody like Wenger trolling a whole community and uh, being a dick. But the response by Stuart Robertson, and that's, and, and by the way, this is my opinion, Stuart can do as he sees fit, to now say that the uh, commonly accepted OSR logo is no longer free to use because even though it's under com Creative Commons 3.0, apparently there is some issues with uh, moral rights and who he wishes to be associated with. So, my issues, my fear, would be that something like that could spill over to, well, yeah, I don't like you. None of your work is actually offensive, but I personally don't like you and don't want to be associated with you, and therefore you can't use the logo. Don't use anybody's fucking logo, folks, unless it's something that's supported by the publisher of the, of the game system you're looking to use. DCC. Compatibility logo, why not? So the Woodsbury compatibility logo, why not? Um, if they come out one, one for Labyrinth Lord, sure, use it. Why not? They're not going to, you know, this is showing it actually is associated with certain game system. It has to meet certain requirements. Not There's no requirements to use that OSR logo now, except that you don't offend certain individual. And again, Wenger was an asshole. Uncalled for. Not needed. Holy shit. Dude. I'm offended. Okay? I'm offended. It takes a lot to offend me. I did 20 years as a police officer. I've been called the worst shit in the world. It takes a lot to offend me. It takes a lot to troll me. And then the trolling was directed at me. I'm offended. So I can understand Stuart's reaction, but I think it's the wrong reaction. I really do. But in any case, that's the history of Targa. It lasted about 15 months. Well, I shouldn't say that. It lasted a year and a half. Almost. But, uh, it had good ideas. But you can't hurt these cats. Okay? The OSR eats their own. When you try to put yourself in the position that you, you feel is earned, you get nothing from this community that they don't give to you freely. If you think you're taking something from this community or that you deserve something from this community or you earn something, it ain't yours. It ain't yours. All right. So I'm, I'm sorry to see the current drama going on in the OSR, but as history will tell you, the OSR is full of drama, and it's full of drama because it's not homogenized. It's not like the milk on your shelf in your fridge. It hasn't been uh, subject to radiation, you know, and it, it is old-style milk with the cream separating from everything else, but in this case, we have lots of different types of cream all separating or overlapping and mixing. Accept that. Accept that. And accept that somebody else's definition of what the OSR is isn't going to be your definition. The OSR is like pornography. You 
personally know it when you see it. But what you see is not necessarily what somebody else sees. I've probably been running my mouth long enough at this point. All right, folks. Thank you for listening. Thank you for stopping on by. God bless. Be safe. Roll your dice well. And if you're a football fan, I hope your teams do well. Unless they're playing New York teams, in which case I hope they fuck up. I will still lose even if your teams fuck up. All right, folks. Be good. Later, later. Wow, how often do I do an addendum to a podcast that I just recorded? But, of all things, I find a post on the tavern that actually deals with Targa, and I got a lot of history in it. Here, we're going to give some of the history from Michael Shorten. There were two things involved in the Targa dust-up, and since my name and a couple of misunderstandings are being bandied about, let me tell you what happened from my perspective. To TLDR version, Targa was a confused mess, but I worked with it in blind faith that we could have nice things. Targa was unfairly put into the position of being the OSR police when a fuckwad blogger got his panties in a bunch over Zach's new at the time blog. I felt kicked in the nuts by the nerd wad brigade and left Targa because of what I was seeing as opposed to what I wanted, just having a fun fun playing games. I could have cared less about Zach. I still could care less about Zach. Uh, Scott S.Z. Old School Rant is a piece of shit. Now, Scott's the one that apparently started all this up. Uh, Target was originally set up by Victor Raymond to promote International Traditional Gaming Week and various bloggerati got involved. With the increase in interest in old-school gaming, it morphed into this thing that some people thought was the spokesperson of the so-called OSR, and some folks thought it should be something else, a clusterfuck of committee think. There were a number of emails, even phone meetings between myself, James Mal, Victor Raymond, Ryan, etc. I think Raggy was there, but I honestly don't remember. What I do remember is sheer frustration. All I wanted Target to be was just another way to get people to sit down and play games. Some of the more publishing-related folks, James Mal for sure, and Raggy, now that I am writing this and remembering, wanted it more about publishing. The conversation got hung up on what is old school and various related bullshit, but in the end, a few of us, myself included, got a rough mission statement hammered out. Uh, this is when Targa reboots. It was basically put asses. This is uh, September 14, 2009, put asses in chairs is the way I phrased it. But I wanted to put butts in chairs to play games. I became the cheerleader and kept the Targa blog and news going and a couple of others, but everyone was pretty much doing their own shit. People still tried to make Targa into the old school police, but I ignored it. See, that was the perception that I had of Targa at the time, that it was the old school police. Uh... Uh, then they then they talk about the fucking fundraiser. Now this is awesome, folks. This is awesome. This is a post uh, linked from January eighteenth, twenty ten. Lays it out. Gail Gygax wanted to make a statue of Gary Gygax, and so Targa was going to raise money by selling old school games and donated it. Michael Shorten, the Chicago Wiz, says, I ran eBay auctions, organized the shipping of items to me and to the winners. I pretty much did it all myself. Not giving other guys grief, just setting this up so, uh, you know, my perspective. I carry the ball gladly. We raised 500 I was really damn proud of that. And I went to Gary Khan to help give the check to the Guy Gag family. And that's when Scott C. showed up with the precursor to Yiddish old school rant. He had been doing snarky, funny posts until he thought he didn't like Zach's new blog and he didn't like that Targa had linked to Zach's blog. That Gary Khan weekend, when he posted some screed on his blog and rallied the nerd wah brigade over Zach, I was all happy that we had raised 500 I was pretty goddamn proud of that fact, that people had come together and raised some cash for what seemed like an innocent but decent cause. I came home to a shitstorm of posts, counterposts, and all sorts of stupid-ass drama. All the good we had done was lost in a really fucking stupid, petty furor 
over one pissant piece of shit being all up in arms over some artist type who worked porn and was doing video podcasting over gaming. Big fucking deal. So it got nasty and ugly, and suddenly Targa was put in the position of being wrongly told to take sides. What the fuck? It wasn't like we were saying that we should have Hakosa esque real life rituals. It was a fucking blog. Why the fuck should Targa take a stand? I felt like nobody gave shit about putting asses in chairs or fundraising or the hard work. All they wanted was wah, 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 nerd rage and to take sides. One of the ways my Asperger's, Mike says he has Asperger's, manifests itself is through an extreme view of right, wrong, black, white when I perceive injustice. This pissed me off to no end, and I was the blindest coming off my eyes. I had just given a speech in August. When accepting the swords and wizardry ending on behalf of Matt Finch and company about hobbyists do yourself as having a voice, and our voice was a bunch of crying over a blog. I've been involved in what I thought was some cool stuff, writing and playing games and meeting people and having fun, and it was lost in a bunch of crying over a blog. So I took my ball and went home. After a while, my ass be calmed down, and I got my act together and started playing and blogging again, but my blinders were off. I started seeing ugly sides of the RPGs, and oh, it's our publishing. I started seeing some shit that just didn't match what I wanted just to play games, put asses in chairs and have some fun. So eventually life happened and I left. I still call it the so called OSR. Targa died and long live Targa. I think if more folks just cared about putting asses in chairs and not being the outraged nerd police that seems to rear itself every so often, it would have been more fun and not ended the way it did. Now, I thought it was very important that I. I pulled this up as I just dug it up after I did the initial part of the podcast. And here we go. Here, here is how Targa collapsed at the end. And part of the reason is, and, and Mike alludes to it, uh, there were too many chefs stirring the pot. There was too much of a committee, too much of... Uh, let's go in this direction, let's go in this direction. And the, the definition of Targa wasn't really uh, well done. And although you had many people trying to steer the ship, you only had one person who apparently gave a shit. And that was Mike. I met Mike uh, at Game Hall last weekend. And it was really good putting a face to somebody who I've known through his blogging and through Target and through other stuff and, and gaming with him online. It was nice to put a face to the person that I have associated with. Targa was a good idea. Uh, I, I think what happened with Targa is it literally took on too much without a definition. It, it, it filled a hole that was looking to get filled, but the hole itself was not defined. Are you trying to get gamers in here? You're trying to say what is good game, what is good for the OSR, and what is bad. Right now, that's part of the the, the war, the culture war. God, I hate saying that word, that phrase. But in any case, that's what's going on. What's good? What should be in gaming? You know what? I I I don't want your culture in my gaming. From any side, up, down, left, right. Back forth. Don't give a shit. I want gaming. And Mike is right. How do how do we succeed as a community? We put asses in chairs to game. That is what it comes down to. That was the true goal of Targa. But it it's kind of like the one ring corrupts even good thoughts. You know, it it, it got corrupted here. You know. And and Mike did the right thing. He, he he left it. So there's a little bit extra. Um, I'm sure if I if I go through this enough, I can find more. But I I, I again it, it it for perspective to today. And today's drama. I think that this is appropriate. That's a long episode. I'm sorry about that. All right, folks. Now. In truth, I'll talk to you tomorrow.